<laughs> Hello everyone. This is the core conversation state of media initiative. I am Naveen Valecha. I work with Acquia Professional Services as senior software engineer and I am with Drupal. I am working with Drupal from last six years and I am Drupal.org project application approver and the maintainer of groups.drupal.org. Uh, hey, um, my name is Adam Honick. I am uh, also at Acquia. I uh, engineer the lightning distribution. Um, I maintain the migrate subsystem in core, um, probably the media system in core as well, um, or I wouldn't be up here, I guess. I've been doing Drupal for a little over a decade. Um, I may be the most histrionic person on IRC, possibly at DrupalCon, we'll see. Um, and then, Sean, do you want to introduce yourself a bit? That's me, you can hear us? Sure. Yeah. So we have Sean in over Skype. So we're just going to talk a little bit about like the media initiative, kind of how we got to where we're at now and where we're going and how you can help get us there. So Naveen, take it away, man. So this is more about a session. So if you have any questions in the middle, let us know. Uh, where is Drupal 8 right now? <coughs> Drupal 8, we have the support for the local files and images. We have file and image module in the core itself, which do provide the support for the local images and the file and other documents types. We have the support for the responsive images. We have breakpoint and responsive module available in the core. And we have the support for the alley features and the embedding of the images in VisiVig from the CK editor plugin. And we and file module also provides a nice listing of the files using our views. Nice things that we don't have in the core right now. We could not reuse the media. Uh, we don't have any site-wide library uh, right now. Uh, we could not organize the media in folders or in the categories. Uh, we don't have the support for the remote media. F similarly, the field-level files as well. And we could not upload the multiple files in one go. Uh, we have, in the contrib space, we have the solution right now, PL upload for that, but not in the core. So th just a brief. Yep. Yeah, we just want to mention that again. A lot of this is coming from a survey that was done uh, a little while ago. The URL is right here. Sorry. So a lot of this information um, is coming from a survey that was done a little while ago. The URL is right there. Um, basically asking people, what is it that we want to have in core? What do we need in, what kind of media support does Drupal need? And the responses were quite interesting. And a lot of this stuff is nice stuff that people kind of more or less expect that we just don't have. And it's hard to, it can be hard to get that stuff in. Um, without contrib solutions and possibly some custom hacking as well. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. So, post, so media growth in the core from Drupal 6, we have the upload module available, which allows us to attach the files through the up node. And in the contrib space, we have the CCK file field CCK and the image field CCK. And in the also the image cache module available for the image processing and the IMC module. So, so the transition happened from the Drupal 6 to Drupal 7 is like we moved the, uh, the CCK file field as a file module in the core and the CCK image field from the country space to the image module in the core and we, uh, the image cache module in the Drupal 6 uh, from the country space has been moved to the image styles. Uh, but uh, there, there, are, there are more nice features in the Drupal 7 uh, in the country space. We have the responsive images and the picture break uh, to, for the picture and break via picture and breakpoint contributed modules. And there are, there are two, uh, there are the two ways to use up the media, to achieve up the media functionality in the Drupal 7. Uh, we had the file entity and the media entity um, media not media, uh, exactly the media, mo media module in the Drupal 7, which would allow us to, uh, to all this reusing of the media and the site-wide media library. Yep, three, three, weeks ago, three weeks before that media 7.x got stable. Yeah. So Hand of applause for that. that. Is that stable? Yay! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so in Drupal,
Drupal 7, we could achieve the more advanced functionality using the couple of the more contributed modules. I'll give a brief, of, brief about that because it's more of a core conversation. So this is the one of, one of these, these media CK reader which, which works like a bridge between the media module and the CK reader module itself. So it allows files to be embedded within the text area of the CK reader uh, using that media browser one. And we have the media OM media embed one. It's it's more of an API module. So so it provides the API for the remote media like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Flickr, and so on. And we have the PL upload for the uh, uploading multiple files. And we have the entity embed module available in the country space to embed the entities uh, into the CK editor. And there are ten ten different ways to. Ten, more than 10 different ways to crop the images. Couple of them are image field crop, uh, manual crop, IMC crop, and many more. But in Drupal 7, we have the two big players, file and... <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> in Drupal 8, in, yeah, we have the two big players, file entity and the media entity. File entity followed the same concept of that Drupal 7 does. So we have the fieldable files, so everything, we don't, didn't have the support for the remote media. However, like media entity is the, uh, media entity provides, it's all, uh, all on API itself, so it provides a base, base entity of media. The, like we could reference uh, all kind of media objects like uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and uh, different types of photos, videos. Media entity provides, uh, Provides us the uh, provides us the relation between the Drupal and the media media resource. So it's a content entity in itself. Uh, so, so this module provides you the like provides a base storage component for the Drupal media ecosystem. So this media entity in the country space has a solid solid uh, solid foundation base in the country space because uh, and the couple of the distribution has proven that the it has the solid foundation base. So there are Drupal 8 more contrib awesomeness. We have the entity browser module in the contrib, contrib space. So the goal of this module is to provide a generic solution for embedding uh, like a selector or picker something. So it's like an entity reference widget. So we could embed entities into the Visivig module. Uh, next, uh, embed module, it's, it's an uh, API in itself. So it's, so it's, so it's uh, out of the box, it doesn't do anything. So any country module will have to implement the API and uh, in this, the entity embed and the URL embed are the dependent module of that embed one. So we could uh, embed the entities using that entity embed and we could embed the OM embed objects into the CK editor using the URL embed module. We, we have the inline entity form in the country space as well. So it provides the a uh, widget for the inline management of the content entity, entities. We will see its nice use case in the Thunder video later. Crop API, uh, it's an API module just to standardize the image crop API storage. Uh, this module would not do much by itself. User should pick up any of the UI module uh, that, that should utilize its API and uh, focal point and image crop widget. Uh, the, these modules allows us to focal point allows us to specify uh, the po specific portion of the image that is most important. Uh, this information can be used to that the image is cropped or the crop uh, cropped or saved uh, scaled at the whatever the configuration that we will provide. So image uh, image widget crop provides this uh, whole configuration at the widget level of the image field. So here we go. Drop down, drop down, drop down JS module. So it's provide it's provides the integration with the drop down layers JS library. So it provides the drag and drop of the uh, file uploads with the image previews. And we have the fallback formatter uh, module, which allows multiple formatters to be used for display. Uh, it provides a, a field formatter that can attempt multiple formatters, and the first one that returns output will win. It's similar like this tag services in Drupal 8. Uh, field formatter, uh, 
the another one is the field formatter. It provides the generic, it provides the collection of generic formatters for entity reference field. Uh, that uh, that output a specific field to the reference entity. Yep, we have the distributions in country space in Drupal 8 media, which has proven that the Drupal 8 media entity in the country space has a solid solid foundations. So we have Thunder and the Lightning distribution. So Thunder ships with a couple of the media modules, uh, me, few are me, image, Instagram, Twitter, and the slideshow, and many more. So th Thunder's override, Thunder has its own feature for the medias as well. So th which provides the media experience out of the box. Uh, let me run this video. Here we will see the nice use case. Really? Hmm? Yeah, we could turn the, uh, we can mute it, but I could explain. Yeah, we, yeah, we just talk through it. Yep. So here, it, the Thunder distribution comes with the couple of the media bundles out of the box. So these these are the media bundles, the which comes uh, comes from the me, the Thunder features. So here it comes comes with the media listings. Uh, here's a media listing page with couple of different type of media. Go. So here we'll see that it's we are going to uh, create any of the type of the media, so that we could so we, so that it will it would get saved to the media library and we could reuse it later. Could you increase the speed? Here, like different type of Twitter media, we just need to provide the tweet for this link of this tweet. Oh, it's the media main patch RTBC two days before. So here is, it's the different type of media, it's the YouTube one. And we are gonna use, we are gonna reference this one in the article content. So it's, a, so it, Thunder comes with the nice flavor of that inline entity form and the paragraph one. Uh, here we'll g see it later, yep, here. These are just the normal text fields and reference fields. So we are adding diff uh, Here we are gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we are gonna reuse that existing video from the media library, which is also one of the target for that media initiative. Yep. So we, we could add as many as configuration as per requirement. It's about to the sound. Oh, it's unpublished now, so after publishing it, we will see. So we have the different type of media which we refer, referred in this particular note. So here's the nice gallery. Yep. And that's Thunder Media out of the box. 
you. So, uh, yep, here's the lightning yeah, let's, let's talk about Do you want to get the chance? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Over to Adam for um, the lightning. Yeah, Lightning is another distribution, a little bit more sparse than Thunder. It ships with a lot of the same stuff. It has the media entity module plus a bunch of its integrations with like Instagram, Twitter, uh, files, and stuff like that. It has a media browser that's built on top of Entity Browser. It has uh, bulk uploads with uh, DropZone.js and some fun helper APIs um, that will improve the developer experience as well. And it's wizard approved, so, you know. Um, so yeah, Naveen also put together a video uh, demonstrating Lightning really quickly and just kind of some of its functionality here. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this, just I want to explain, is this is a lot of, this kind of inspires our approach to putting media in core and kind of what the MVP has been is what these two distros and others as well um, have put together using the contrib, using the parts from contrib. So here in Lightning, you know, like exactly with Thunder, it ships with a bunch of media types right out of the box to use. Um, and you know what, I'm gonna speed the video up also in this one, because why not? Oh, there we go. Okay, it has a media library exactly the way Thunder does. Um, it actually comes with media entity. So, I'm sorry, did I like pause it or something? Um, wait, damn it. <sighs> so this is why I have to like not press the things. So yeah, oh my god, I did it again. <laughs> you know what, should we just move on with this? Yeah, forget it, you can see the videos later, the slide, the slide URL's in the front. We only have some time and I wanna be able to have some discussion in here, so whatever. Um, point is, Lightning and Thunder both do things with media, with the contrib parts, and it's pretty slick. So, let's talk about the media initiative and how we can actually get some of this slick media stuff into core. Um, and how we're going to go about doing that. So we have the media initiative. It's a fully approved, full steam ahead initiative. Um, the goals of which are pretty straightforward. Um, we want the basic, normal, kind of intuitive media handling experience that you would get in just about any CMS. That you would, I would think you would expect that in most CMSs. Um, but because this is Drupal, we want to probably go a little bit further than that. Um, we want to provide an API in core um, for integrating many different media services, many different media types, um, with a really just robust, rock solid, flexible API, because, you know, Drupal, this is what we do. Um, you know, by the same token, the functionality that we want to ship with core will be fairly limited. Um, you know, we don't want to support too many things out of the box. Um, that's what Contrib is for. Um, and we also want to be able to integrate with third-party media services, digital asset management, stuff like that, fairly easily uh, using the core APIs. So there's, hang on a minute, where did I put my water? Here it is. Um, so there's going to be three phases of this initiative. Um, the first one is our MVP, um, which is, we're calling it the essentials. And the goals there are we're going to just kind of we're going to have a media API in core. We're going to define what that API looks like, you know, what the classes are, how you use them. Um, and then on top of that, the first thing we're going to do is build functionality that will essentially mirror what the core file and image modules already do, um, just on top of media entities and media types and kind of the media API rather than just using files directly. Um, we're also going to add a module that implements a basic media library so that you can, you know, in CK Editor, you can call up all the media you have, you can choose ones to use um, in like nodes or whatever for entity references to media. I'm gonna demo that. And we wanna also provide support out of the box for like O-embed providers like uh, YouTube, Vimeo, I think Instagram might be one as well, there's a bunch. Um, to just be able to embed remote media very, very simply and easily out of the box. We're targeting most if not all of this stuff for Drupal 8.4. Um, we also want to have WYSIWYG embedding, which may be 8.5. I think we want it in 8.4. I can't remember the details. Um, but yeah, we, in other words, we want all this. We want it as soon as possible. We're also going to have the second phase, which is extras. And that is basically going to be taking place all in contrib. It's more shiny stuff and advanced functionality. So like really cool cropping, multiple uploads, advanced embedding, I don't know, you name it. Um, this is all going to be contrib modules built on top of the core media system 
with an eye towards possible adoption in core eventually. Because um, you know, things that, as you know, things that we like from contrib tend to make it into core in some form. So that's what extras kind of is about. It's concentrating efforts to build those things. And to wit, um, we already have all these cool modules for, you know, from the D8 ecosystem, um, parts of which may go into core or at least inspire things in core. Uh, you know, like Naveen already described things like embed, entity embed, which are embedding any entity into like CK editor, um, drop zone for, you know, drag and drop uploads, cropping, et cetera, et cetera. So these may all be part, these may all become part of the uh, media extras uh, package, for lack of a better word. And the third part of the initiative is the extend part. And the idea here is really about integrating with third party media services, with digital asset management, uh, asset management things. The reason for which is like Drupal, you know, Drupal's great, but third party media services may be able to handle the really complicated stuff like licensing, adverts, uh, you know, geo restrictions, stuff like that. They might be able to just do a better job. So we should have really strong integration with those services, and that's what Extend is all about. It's using the core APIs to talk to uh, third-party media services. Brightcove might be the proof of concept. We don't really, we haven't planned this one out too far yet. We're more focused on the essentials at this point. And so I'll talk a little bit about kind of how the architecture of this is put together. Um, the important things to know is that we're basically taking the media entity module and porting it into core as the media module. So we're taking that namespace. Um, Media entities in core are not special. They're just normal content entities. They're things with fields attached. Um, and as you saw in the Thunder demo video, it's, you know, creating a media entity is like making a node. There's a form, you fill it out, it works, you know, whoop de doo um, They have media types, which are config entities, just like nodes have node types. It's very, very simple. Where things get more interesting is um, that media a little bit of a departure from Drupal 7 here is that media are not necessarily files. Uh, media are more abstract than that. So media could refer to a SoundCloud audio clip. It could refer to some snippet of text. It could refer to a tweet. It could really refer to anything. And the things that are responsible for bridging that gap um, and kind of standard, you know, exposing to Drupal in a standard way the important information about any given piece of media uh, be it a file or be it some web resource, is the source plugin. And this is a plugin type um, exposed by the media module. Um, and it's responsible for doing exactly that. It is the bridge between some media of some kind and Drupal. Um, each media type that you create is associated with one source plugin. They're responsible for all of the logic about how to store, me like how media is stored. Is it stored on the web somewhere? Is it stored in the local file system? That's up to the source plugin. Um, validation, getting metadata about each, about some piece of media, they're all responsible for that. And that's really kind of the, that's really the important stuff that you need to know about the core media architecture. Everything else about it, um, if you read the patch, which I don't recommend, it's 7,000 lines, but I did it. I really don't recommend it. Um, if you read it though, like everything in there is pretty normal, pretty standard. This is the interesting stuff. So as I said, it's the media entity module, renamed media, moved into core. We're going to merge functionality from the contrib media entity image module in there. Um, and the idea there is so that media will come with support for files and images out of the box. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can have very quick parity with uh, the core file and image modules, which have a slightly different approach to this stuff. We're also going to include a source plugin um, that implements support for OEmbed so that we have something a little bit cooler than just, oh, hey, here's file and image, here's media with file and image support, which should I use, you know? Um, it's going to be out of the gate beta experimental, which means the API will be stable. Um, and if the rest of our MVP isn't in core by Drupal 8.4, we're just gonna hide it. Um, so you'll still be able to use it, but uh, yeah, so it's a little bit of an interesting situation there, but that's what it's going to be. Um, then additionally, we're going to provide the media library module, which will be experimental, um, and that's going to be built on top of media, and it implements a very, well, you'll see. It's a UI for selecting and reusing media. Pretty simple. We're also going to want to have a uh, migration path from, from core file and image fields, because 
the underlying storage is different. So if you want to have, if you have file and image fields and data in those fields and you want to switch them over to using the media system, there's going to need to be a migration path for that. Hopefully not too complicated. So the media library, I want to talk about that a little bit. It's, um, well, you didn't see what Lightning does. You, do, you did see what Thunder does, very briefly. It's a pared down version of what they do with Entity Browser. Uh, Entity Browser is a really, really complex module that's super duper powerful. Um, we don't need that much power. So it's a pared down version of that. It's not an API. It's not going to be like something that you extend. It's just like going to be there. Um, but it is customizable. It's based on a, on a view that it comes with and a view mode that it comes with. And you can change those things, change the way media looks in your library, change the way you filter media, stuff like that. Um, it will also have a new field widget, which will be used with um, entity reference fields that reference media items and which therefore know how to like call up the library and talk to it and like interact with it and stuff. Inline entity creation is not going to be supported yet, at least. Um, and by that I mean stuff like, you know, imagine a modal where you have your library and you have a tab that says upload or create from embed code and it just creates the media right there. Not going to be in this, at least not yet. Um, Lightning and Thunder both have that though. So, you know, if you need that, use them. Um, this is a screenshot of what it looks like, but uh, I think I would, I would demo it for you at this point. So what we have is this is a Drupal 8.4.x dev uh, with all the patches applied and I've tested it so I know it will probably work, this being, this being a live demo. So what I have here is a normal entity reference field that is referencing media items. And it's using the special widget that is provided by the media library module. So if I click add media, I get this view in a modal. It's this is a normal view. Um, you could totally change this, add more filters, remove filters, you know, rebuild it entirely if you wanted to. Um, and I can choose media to use um, from my cheeky collection of memes in my field. And you know, there you go. Okay, I selected them. I can actually see them, which is you know, I can reorder them with drag and drop, which is in my view kind of a step up from what we've had remove things, and you know, there you go. So pretty basic, pretty intuitive, um, going to be in core. Yay. And there was much rejoicing. So having gone into that, a um, couple of URLs that you may find interesting, the UI, we have a live clickable kind of interactive UI prototype of kind of what we want the media library to become. This, what you just saw was really kind of a proof of concept that we hacked together in Berlin in a week. Um, the UI prototype is a little bit more uh, involved, a little bit more advanced, so you feel free to check that out. Um, there was the issue where they designed the prototype if you really care about reading a lot of bike shedding um, that you can check at. And then the main issue that has the patch uh, containing the experimental media library module as it currently exists is the last. Um, URL there. So, sorry. So the way this looks all together is um, we have several very distinct issues we have to attack in a very, um, a very specific order in which we have to attack them. The current, the, the main thing we're waiting on right now is the main, the big 7,000 line patch that brings the media module into core and the media API. That's currently RTBC. Um, so we are very, and it's been, you know, been working on it for like five months. So we're really, really hoping to get that in soon. If we're lucky, it'll be during this DrupalCon, but don't, you know, you didn't hear it from me. Um, after we have that, we're going to very quickly move to get parity with file and image module. Um, since those are probably the most, we think it's the most, um, common use case. It's like the 80% use case. So first will be a file source plugin, then will be an image plugin, which extends that. Um, parallel to that, we'll do an O-embed plugin, which is sort of slightly lower priority since it's new. Um, once we have the file and image source plugins, we want to have widgets, which work with media things, but essentially emulate the file and image widgets that we know and love, and then formatters that do the same. Um, meanwhile, um, once the main patch is in, we can start refactoring and um, re-rolling and fixing up the media library to actually get that in. So basically it looks good. 
and these are the issues in question. Um, if you'll, you know, come back to the slides and copy the NIDs if you really want to read them. Um, and there's a lot of follow-ups from the main patch, but these are really the important ones, and these make up the bulk of our MVP for Drupal 8.4. If you have a module that already integrates with Media Entity, or um, you have custom code that integrates with it, uh, or something like that, you will probably want to be porting your module to the core media API when it lands. We wrote a change record for that, which is really, really easy to follow. It's just like rename this to this, stop calling this, change this reference to that. You know, you'll be done in 10 minutes, depending on how good your code is, I guess. <laughs> um, it, could, it could get gnarly, man. So what's next? Well, get the main patch into core. It's number one. Everybody agrees we need to do that. Parity with file and image. Get the media library done. Then we start getting into the extras ecosystem. Refactor things on top of the core media API and um, you know, improve upon that. And eventually, uh, get rid of media entity. Give it a hero's funeral, put it out to sea, whatever we gotta do with it, I don't know. Um, and you know, and start integrating with third-party services um, and just kind of generally make the things happen that we've all wanted to have happen and have not been able to do except with monkey patching contrib things together. So if you would like to help with this, we meet in IRC every Wednesday at 2 o'clock uh, Greenwich Mean Time. The contacts, the people who know the most are Sean, who is, has been very, very quiet on Skype. Maybe he fell asleep, I don't know. He's in the Netherlands. Um, me, myself, and Approxima, uh, Gabor, who's over there, and uh, Naveen. So we all hang out in the Drupal Media Room, and you can talk to us. We also have a uh, sprint for this stuff on Friday. Um, we also really like front-enders and UX people. That media library is not going to look good if just engineers are putting it together, in my view. So uh, if you're a front-ender or UX person, we want, we want you to help us, please. And that's it. Uh, yeah. Ask, ask okay. Wait, do you want to come to the mic so it's recorded? It's better to first explain, first show the lightning video, let's show the complexity of the entity browser in lightning. Yeah, I could, I could do yeah. it in a bit. Yep. Well, I ask, ask, ask your question first if you want. No, we'll do You really want me to show the video? <laughs> <laughs> we, let's do it in a bit. I have, we have questions already. I just want to hear from no. people. Good. You sure you want to see the video? Okay. It's not a live demo. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm afraid it somehow won't work. <laughs> YouTube will stop working. Okay. Hmm? Oh, yeah, I'll increase the speed. And then I won't touch anything. Because last time I did that, nothing worked right. So, yeah, the lightning video. Um, we got some bundles, um, images, tweets, videos, documents, generic files, stuff like that. Um, very, very similar to Thunder. If you go to the media tab under content, you have the media, the view of your media, which this, as I said, it comes with media entity. It's just a view. You can change it, filter it however you want. And if you add media, it's like adding a node. You choose the type. You enter some required stuff. Um, one thing Lightning does do a little bit differently is it tries to generate live previews of things that are based on embed codes. So things like tweets will instantly show up. Uh, videos also instantly show up. I think that's in the video somewhere. Um, Instagrams too, stuff like that. And then you choose, you just select the checkbox to have it save into your media library. Um, the idea being to support one-off uses of media where it's like, well, I just want to use this one time. You know, don't really want to reuse it. Um, video works the same way um, as tweets do except that it has a really, really dumb bug where the preview appears the entire size of the page. <laughs> Maybe I should fix that one of these days, I don't know. Um, and yeah, it's, so creating media under media entity is really, really straightforward. Um, where Lightning gets really cool is in reusing it. We have integration with CK Editor through uh, Entity Embed and the Embed module. Um, we also are, so that's a media reference field right there. It's using our, our media browser um, to call up stuff that's in the media library and allows you to select it. Um, it also has these upload and create embed tabs, which I don't know if you can see. Um, 
but the idea there is to be able to create media inline right there from within the browser. Um, but yeah, so here we have a field that supports referencing media. We have obviously selected some stuff. Um, did you do a piece with the CK editor part or no? Okay, well I guess you don't get to see that unless you install Lightning. Um, but you can also do this exact same workflow with the media browser um, from CK editor. It's this button that looks like a star. So yeah, that's a really fast rundown of Lightning's integration. A little more sparse than Thunder's, but uh, woohoo. Um, questions? Yeah, so, so let's say I have some sites that I've built with Drupal 8 core, some sites that I've built with Lightning, some sites that I've built with Thunder. What sort of experience should I expect to have as we go through this process of putting media in, in, in core? Well, all, the thing that they, those all have in common is they're all built on top of media entity. So it sounds to me like you would expect to have more or less the same experience as you update to core media, and there's gonna be a update path, like a smooth update path, because the good news is while, while building the core media module, we didn't change the data model for media, it's really just the APIs that changed, so it's, pr it's a pretty safe update path. Famous last words, but I think it's gonna be pretty smooth and pretty easy. And, and so then, like for, for example, with something like Lightning, is there anything that's currently built into Lightning that I, we, we might lose along the way? No, and the reason for that is that Lightning particularly, um, we're not gonna regress functionality. Um, you know, when we switch to core media, we're gonna be switching to core media under the hood, but we want everything to continue to work the way that it does because it's awesome. Um, <laughs> so basically, you can expect things to continue to be awesome and, um, awesomer as we take advantage of the new stuff in core. Awesome, great. Yeah. Can't speak for Thunder though, but I, I think they'd probably tell you the same thing. Um, this, is a, whoops, uh, this is a little bit in the, in the weeds, but on a bunch of projects recently, we've been making like basically subclassed entity reference field types okay. to do special stuff that needed to happen. Like mm. usually it's things like overriding the title of an article in the specific place where it's being referenced and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But the one thing that we've run into is um, media, you know, the entity reference picker libraries, all of those things we have to go through and like write subclasses for every single widget that might be used. And I'm seeing other similar projects starting to emerge as people like say, I can do crazy things with subclass entity references. Is there anyone that would be a good person to talk to about like the potential for, I mean, n not like in the uh, 8.4 release, but the ongoing potential for making sure that like picker widgets and stuff like that play nicely with entity reference plus some extra kinds of fields that people are doing. Where like what they do would work fine if they could somehow just know I can put my reference data in there. Well, that sounds like a backwards compatibility question. So to me, it's like the, mod the authors of those modules on, uh, or of those classes that you're subclassing, if they care at all about backwards compatibility, and damn, they should, um, but if they do, then they'll make sure that you can subclass things and they can change things and not break stuff, where all the same methods should still be available. Well, I, I guess I mean like the way right now widgets, um, they have to know explicitly about field types that they can interact with. Yeah. Unless, uh, I mean, unless you like create a subclass version or something like that. Um, maybe I'll just I'll, I'll just corner you in a, in in like the sprint room or something like that. But it, that's it, doable. Th I, I think, especially as D eight continues, I think that's a pattern we're going to see a whole lot of, and it would be cool if the overhead of integrating with special kinds of widgets got less arduous. So I'm, yeah. ve I'm very interested in no, that's okay. Yeah, we can, we can totally go into the weeds on Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Love hanging out in the weeds. So one of the things our client, a couple of our clients have been asking for is the ability to remove images and files from the system, mm -hmm. um, which uh, is not quite as easy yet, uh, yeah. Drupal 8 wise. Is, is that under this initiative since it's files or is it something else? When you say remove files and images from the system, you mean like the physical files from the file system? They want to, they want to be able to delete, to delete the, the, the image or the file like on the files tab and, and have it be gone. 
delete the image from the, yeah, I don't think you can do that right now. No, you can't. Um, well, the thing about, I don't think media is really gonna be affecting that, and the reason I say that is because media is an abstraction layer above files and stuff, and that's really kind of low-level file handling in core. Um, I think, I mean, it may clean it up somewhat, and that's because I think files are under some, like if they're marked a certain way, um, they're like automatically removed on by cron after a certain period or something. Well, um, there's a file usage yeah, table. Yeah, the file usage table, exactly. Yeah, Jess might have better answers on this one. Yeah, that's, I, I, I was just made aware of that issue yesterday. I'm like, good. I mean, the thing, the reason that might be. Huh? So the recording wouldn't have picked up what was just said about what the issue is? Oh. You can clarify the last one. Okay, yeah, no, go ahead. No. Um, so there are currently several critical issues where uh, Drupal will delete files for you even if maybe you didn't want them to be because there's a number of, but turns out tracking file usages on a website where you can enter any kind of HTML in any kind of field anywhere isn't yeah. actually, it's a very, very difficult problem to solve. Um, so there are a number of critical issues in the core queue right now and the solution that we've settled on is probably actually that we are going to stop automatically cleaning up files, give the user the option to, to manually remove a file, and, and with like a views bulk operation view potentially, and deprecate the entire concept of file usage tracking. We might show you like, we think this file's used in three places, but if you delete it, media does also help actually yeah. resolve this conceptually in a way, because instead of needing to track, like ev when you use media, you've made a choice to embed the media, and when you're deleting the media, you're deleting the media thing, right? Right, so, so the you media is the only thing using the file. Right. And, the and you, you only would run into, you, you, at least you wouldn't run into the problem with a, like we're not gonna automatically purge your media for you because you no. put that on the site for a reason. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what the backstory is there for people who don't follow the core issue, critical right. issue counter every day of their lives. <laughs> might be most people in this room. But. Yeah. So basically, it'll help, but it's a little bit out of scope for media specifically. Yeah. Yes? Uh, my question had to do with the uh, file browser. I noticed that you said that uh, it was basically going to be a view, which I agree is a very powerful way of approaching it. Uh, I'm wondering how much thought you put into turning that into an API instead, though, so that you can uh, browse the, uh, the content that exists in a DAM or some other external system. Two words, entity browser. It is very, that this is exactly what the kind of thing that Entity Browser was built to solve. Um, the module Entity Browser actually reminds me the most of at the API level, and I say this in a nice way, um, is views. Um, in the sense that like everything about an Entity Browser is based on plugins that can do pretty much whatever you want if you want to like implement integration with a DAM or like, you know, some kind of special sauce stuff. Um, so for advanced cases like that, definitely Entity Browser. Okay. Um, and that will continue to be stabilizing in Contrib, so. Any other questions? Answers? Complaints? No? All right, it's Miller time. Cool, thanks guys. If you want to help with the media initiative, you can come to the contribution sprints on Friday, as Adam's gestures just indicated. Um, if you've never contributed to Core before, there is a workshop that will help you set up your development environment and teach you how to navigate the Core issue queue. There are mentored sprints where you can work with a group of people to collaborate. And finally, there will also be, if you're like, I don't need help setting up my development environment, you can find Adam at, at, at presumably a media initiative sprint and help.